All right, hello everyone. We'll just give everybody a few more seconds to get logged on and then we will get started. All right, and just as a bit of housekeeping, um, if uh, you can hear me and see my screen, uh, just type yes into the questions box on your GoToWebinar panel, just so I know that you can all hear and see me, um, and then we'll get started. All right, perfect, thank you, Tommy. Okay, well, welcome, welcome to our second webinar for Giving Day for Apes. This one is going to be all about prize structure and strategy. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhardt. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I've had the pleasure of working um, alongside Jackie Bennett from Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries for a few years now on Giving Day for Apes. So, hi, Jackie. Um, she's oh, going to be talking. Hello there. I just had to <laughs> unmute myself to say hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just wanted to, you know, introduce you. Uh, everybody probably knows you very well at this point, but um, she is online. She's going to be doing most of the heavy lifting, and I'm going to uh, just be doing some technical information and some prize strategy information. Um, here's a look at today's agenda. Um, Jackie is going to go through the prize details, schedules, schedule and rules, which is I'm sure what everybody is here uh, waiting on and excited to hear about. Then I'm going to be talking about some pri or prize strategies and tips, so how to win the various prizes that are available this year. Um, and then uh, Jackie and I will both be tag teaming the topic of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, with Jackie handling some of the strategy, and I'll be talking through some of the finer points of, um, you know, running a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser on the Mighty Cause platform. And then we will have a live question and answer session. So if you think of anything that you would like to ask or get more information about while uh, we are presenting, just type that into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel. Um, and we will make sure that we get to it at the end of the presentation. Um, and just to get this question out of the way, we are recording this. Uh, you will have access to the recording and the slides on the Giving Day for Apes website as soon as I am able to upload them to YouTube and put them on the website. And with that, I will pass the mic to Jackie. Sorry, every time. Okay, can, all right. No, nope. introduction, there we go. Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, just to start this year, early giving for Giving Day for Apes is gonna open at midnight Eastern Daylight Time on Monday, September 14th. So all of your online donations from that time onward is going to count towards your giving day totals and your placement on the prize leaderboards. Uh, let's move on. So let's uh, start with a review of the prizes and talk about what is new this year. Next. As mentioned in our first webinar, we are awarding a total of $58,000 in prize funds this year, which is an $8,000 increase from last year. And we are very grateful to our event sponsor, Arcus Foundation, for making this possible, as well as North America Leaderboard sponsor, American Anti-Vivisection Society. This year, we're going to have a combination of leaderboards, power hours, golden tickets, and a few things that you haven't seen before in Giving Day. Let's move on. And we'll start with the leaderboards. As with last year, we have five leaderboards that will come live when our 24-hour event opens. The totals on those leaderboards will include all activity from the time early giving opens. We will have a most dollars raised leaderboard for each continent, as well as two leaderboards in which everyone is going to participate. Those leaderboards are the most unique donors, and the most raised by an individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Let's move on. All right. So for four of the leaderboards, the prizes awarded will be the same as last year. For the most dollars raised leaderboards and the most unique donors leaderboard, the top three placements at the end of the event will win prize funds. So for first place, the prize will be $3,750. For second place, it's $2,250. And third place, it's 1500 Next. 
here's our first new thing. For the peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser leaderboard, we're going to be doing something new. Previously, the total prizes for this leaderboard were less than the others, and we've changed that by adding $4,000 to the prizes on this leaderboard. And not only that, for this leaderboard only, there will be prizes for the top four placements rather than the top three. So you can see the first, play, the first place prize on this leaderboard has increased from 2,000 to 3,250. Second place has increased from 1,000 to 2,250. Third place has increased from 500 to 1,250. And a new fourth place has been created with a prize in the amount of $750. And we'll be talking about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in a little while, and we hope this leaderboard is going to give you a tool to really motivate your supporters to help you on Giving Day and win some prizes for you. Let's next. The Power Hours are back. Our next prizes are the Power Hours, and these are similar to last year. There are six Power Hours in total for total prizes of $15,000. Each continent is going to compete in two power hours, one for the most dollars raised and one for the most unique donors. And each power hour will award one prize at the end in the amount of $2,500. Next. So on the Giving Day website now, you are going to be able to see a full description and schedule of all of the prizes, including the times assigned for the power hours. The power hour results are based only on activity that occurs during the assigned hour and not on any other donations that have been previously received. This means, for example, that someone who's donated previously can come back during a most unique donor power hour and make a donation and be counted as a unique donor for that hour. As with all of the prizes, the results are based only on online donation activity through the Mighty Cause platform. Yeah. And this year again, we have golden tickets, but we have a few new features. We have 10 tickets to be won, and we've added another $1,000 in prize money to the ticket package, so they are now worth $250 each instead of $150. Now these are randomly awarded prizes and all you have to do to qualify for a chance to win is receive at least one donation in any amount in the designated hour leading up to the prize drawing. So you think about it like a name being drawn out of a hat, a virtual hat, and each time you receive a donation during that hour, your organization's name is thrown into the hat and then one name is drawn at the end of the hour. This drawing is done automatically through the Mighty Cause platform, so it is possible for an organization to win more than one ticket. But we're going to limit golden tickets to two. This means if your organization has won two golden tickets, its name isn't going to be thrown back into that virtual hat to win another. That is just a limitation on golden tickets and is in no way uh, impacting your ability to win any of the other prizes or any uh, placement on the leaderboards. It's just for golden tickets. Next. So here you see the times listed for each golden ticket hour. And this schedule is now on the Giving Day website for this year. Please note these are all in Eastern Daylight Time. So when you look at it, Look closely and convert it to your time zone to ensure that you know when you have a chance to win. We have done something else that's new. Uh, there are 10 golden tickets and for seven of them all participants will have a chance to win. But three of them are restricted by continent. This means for example during that 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. hour you see listed only North American participants name will be thrown into the hat for a ticket drawing. And when you look at the whole prize schedule, you're going to see that these restricted golden ticket hours balance with the rest of the schedule for your continent. North America's power hours are later in the afternoon, so this is a drawing event for them earlier in the morning. Asia's power hours are going to be early in the day and then later in the evening, so there's a golden ticket drawing for the Asian participants closer to the midway point of the event. And then Africa's power hours are going to be over by late, uh, late afternoon. So this is going to give the African sanctuaries one more small competition later in the evening that's just for them. Let's move on. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk about new prizes that we haven't offered before in Giving Day for Apes, and that will have a total of $3,000 in value. The first new prize is the kickoff prize. And this is a $500 prize that some organization is going to win the second that the Giving Day leaderboards go live at the beginning of our 24-hour event on October 13th. Now, this will be for whoever has received donations from the most unique donors at that time. And so this is something that can really be used to motivate donors for early giving to get them to help you win this $500 prize. And the note that this is based on unique donors, so the amounts of the donations don't matter. And it doesn't mean that an organization has to have raised the most funds during early giving. It's just whoever has engaged the most unique donors when the event goes live. And that, that organization will get $500. Okay, so next are our three milestone prizes, and these are worth $500 each. These are going to be won just by a matter of chance, and they are going to be awarded to the organization that receives the 2000th online donation of the event, the 2500th online donation of the event, and the 3000th online donation. The amount of the donation doesn't matter, and it also doesn't matter how much the organization has raised prior to these milestones being met. They just have to get that donation. The number of giving day donations is going to start to be counted in early giving. So donation number one will probably come in on September 14th. And we don't know where in the event these milestones will be reached. I can tell you that last year we had around 1,400 early giving donations. And then once the giving day 24 hour event began, we received around another 3,300 plus donations. But if there's a lot of early giving activity, it's possible that that first milestone, the 2000th donation, could be received much earlier this year. Again, we just don't know. Uh, but the Mighty Cause platform will be able to tell. They come in sequentially, and whichever participating organization gets the donations at these three milestones will each get a $500 prize. So, uh, this combination of prizes should motivate a lot of giving throughout the event, and you may think at the end of the day there's going to be nothing left, but that's not the case. Our last new prize of giving day will be the end of the night prize. Now, this is going to go to the participating organization that receives the very, very last online donation of giving day before the Mighty Cause platform shuts it off at midnight. This prize is going to be worth $1,000. And that last donation that comes in can be in any amount. It can be as little as $5. And so this is going to give you an opportunity to reach out to your supporters one last time and ask them to give just a little bit more before midnight Eastern time to try to win that $1,000 prize for you. And the winner of that prize will be announced once the event closes. As I mentioned before, all prize information, including the rules, the schedules for power hours and golden tickets, and the amounts is on the Giving Day website. If you go to the link for rules and prizes, you will find it. When you look at it, please do read it carefully and let us know if you have any questions. We do spend a lot of time each year on setting up the schedule and calculating the prizes and calculating the time zones. But if something seems confusing, we will be sure to go back and add some more explanations and answer your questions. Now, with this assortment of prizes, there are a lot of different strategies you can plan, whether it be for early giving or activity around power hours or keeping the momentum going until the end of the night. And I'm going to turn it over to Linda now to talk a little bit more about strategy. All right, thank you. Oh. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, as Jackie mentioned, all of these prizes are available. There is a lot of money at stake. There's a lot of money to win. And there's a really diverse array of opportunities for organizations participating in this year's event to win prizes. So it's a really great prize lineup. I'm really excited about it. And so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the strategies that you can use to win those prizes, as well as some tips to how you can win those prizes. 
Um, so leaderboards are really the centerpiece of a giving event website, and they represent the cumulative fundraising that your organization does from the time early donations open on September 14th through the end of the event. Um, and just so you know, all donations that come in through peer-to-peer -peer pages are also counted towards your leaderboard totals. Those all go in the same pot for you. So that's another benefit of enlisting peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, which you're going to talk about in just a bit. Um, they will help you help you raise more money and rank higher on leaderboards. Um, when it comes to winning leaderboard prizes, there are a few things that you can do to position yourself to win them. Um, the first is to take advantage of the early giving period. Um, this year it starts on Monday, September 14th, um, which is sooner than it feels like it really should be, but it's coming up soon. Uh, so starting at midnight Eastern time on September 14th, you can start accepting donations that will count for your giving day for apes total. Um, now one thing I did want to talk about with early giving is the fear that some organizations may have about soliciting soliciting donors too early. Um, some organizations are concerned every year for every giving event that they're going to burn them out and eat into the amount that they would give on the actual giving day on October 13th. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that what we do know from hosting many giving events on Mighty Cause is that organizations that take advantage of this early giving period raise more money overall. And a lot of that is because instead of just getting one donation from a donor that comes in a bit earlier, they're actually getting multiple donations multiple donations from these donors so instead of donors just giving once early they usually give once before the event when they're asked to and then they give again on the day of the event when they're asked to um, and for that reason it's definitely worth trying to target your tried and true donors for early giving like your board members and people who have given for your giving day for apes campaigns before those donors are low-hanging fruit they're supportive of you and they're likely going to rise to the occasion when you ask them for a donation and they're also more likely to give more than once. Um, another way you can really incentivize early giving is to have a match for pre-event giving and obviously you have some really great incentive uh, with the pre-event giving prizes that are available to you. Um, now if you only have one match to play with, um, like if you don't have a lot of matching grant funds or any matching grant funds, um, it's probably better to save your matching grants for the day of, but if you do have a little bit of money to spread around from a sponsor or a major donor, you may want to think about having a pre-event giving matching grant that will really push people to give early. Um, winning a leaderboard does require strategic fundraising. So here are some tips that Mighty Cause has seen be effective at winning leaderboard prizes. Um, you're really gunning to increase the amount of money your organization raises year over year. That is how you will be successful. Um, and one way to do that is to work with your giving day donors to increase the size of their gift this year. Um, you do have a donor retention report at your disposal through your Mighty Cause profile um, that can help you see who has given in the past and how much they gave. Um, for most donors, you don't have to bump them up too much to see a, a, di a difference in the amount you raise, but bumping up 20 of your $25 donors from last year to giving $30 this year and moving your $50 donors up to giving 60 or 75 donors um, will, will create a cascading effect that you'll see increase the amount you raise overall. Um, so coming up with a solid email marketing strategy where you segment your donors by gift size, um, acknowledge their last gift for Giving Day for Apes, and suggest a, an amount to them that they can donate in that bumps them up a little bit um, will really be an advantage at getting your totals higher. And of course, if you do have uh, big donors that you contact year over year, um, getting in touch with them, sending them a personal email and a personal note, and, um, and you know encouraging them to give a a little bit more um, can really help you increase those numbers as well. Um, keeping an eye on your position throughout the day and encouraging your donors to help you climb higher on the leaderboard can be a huge help and it can also be a good framework for a social media post or an email. Um, for instance, if you're $200 away from cracking the top five on one of your uh, leaderboards, asking that your donors help you to raise that amount and possibly overtake the organization in front of you can really be motivating to your supporters since they want to see you succeed and they want to see you win prizes for your cause. Um, and for leaderboards, don't take it for granted that you'll stay in the top spot the whole giving event in years past. We have seen a lot of competition in the last few moments 
of the event. Um, and we'll probably see that this year with the end of the night prize as well. So you can easily lose your top spot if you get complacent about it. So if you're looking to win a leaderboard prizes and these are valuable prizes, uh, keep an eye on where you are and keep an eye on what the competition is doing. It's all friendly, it's friendly competition. You're all, you guys are all in this together, but keep an eye on that competition and use that to market to your donors to encourage them to help you climb the leaderboards. So the next prize type is uh, and strategy to discuss are power hours, which are hour-long fundraising sprints where you're, you'll be competing with other organizations to either bring in the most amount of money or the most individual donors, depending on which hour, power hour it is. And as Jackie went into detail about earlier, each continent will have one of each kind of power hour. Um, these are all about strategy. A power hour is not something that is won passively. Um, so if you are looking to win a power hour, you'll want to give your donors a heads up. If you have bigger donors who usually give a substantial amount on giving day, shoot them an email ahead of time and let them know when your most dollars raised power hour is so that they can consider making their gift during that time period. Um, it's all about strategy. Um, you can also uh, include a schedule in any countdown emails you send so that donors are aware of when these hours are, how much money is at stake, and uh, what it will take to win them. Um, and send out an email and social media post at the beginning of the power hour you're competing in so that your, your supporters are mobilized to go to your page and support you during those times. Um, the thing about power hours is that they're really designed as marketing tools for your organization. Um, you have some built-in urgency. You're giving donors the opportunity to do more with their donation by helping you win a prize. And it's really just an excellent and fun way to reach out to your supporters and inspire them to support you. Um, so you can really play up the urgency of the power hour and how much funding you stand to win and what you could do with that funding. So get creative. Think about what you would do with that money if you had it. Um, and one thing I do want to make clear, Jackie mentioned this before, but but each donor during a most unique donor power hour only has to be unique within that hour. Um, so someone who has already given you five times uh, since early giving will be a unique donor if they give within that power hour. Um, prior giving does not disqualify them. That hour exists as its own little bubble where each individual who gives during the space of that hour is unique, even if they've given to you a hundred other times during early giving. Um, so you don't need to find a whole new crop of people there. You just need to mobilize as many people as you can to support you during that hour. Since there's two types of power hours and they're both pretty different, um, we're going to do a slide with tips for each. Um, for most unique donor power hours, it's important to understand that it is 100% a numbers game. It does not matter if you raise less than another organization, so long as you have more unique donors. Um, so the m amount of money that you bring in is essentially meaningless in this type of power hour. And that means it's totally fine to hit up donors again um, to get them to come back and make another small donation. So even if someone previously gave you $200, um, they may be willing to pony up another five dollars to help you win during a most unique donors power hour. Um, the platform minimum here is five dollars. Um, that means one dollar or two dollar donations just are not possible. Our system will not accept them because processing that donation is more um, ex expensive than the donation itself. So we don't allow them here on Mighty Cause. Um, so think about five dollars. What does that buy? That could be the cost of a morning coffee from your favorite coffee shop or your morning bagel. Um, so it can be really helpful to keep that in perspective and work that into your marketing of the power hour. For instance, for the cost of your morning coffee, you can help our sanctuary win $2,500. Um, and messaging like that can be really effective at driving people to give during a most unique donors power hour because they go, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's actually not that much money at all. Um, if you have a matching grant, this is a great time to use it. Um, and something I wanna make sure that everyone is aware of is that donations made to peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers count toward power hours too. Um, our system does not consider these any different. So mobilizing your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers as well to help you get the word out and getting people donating during the power hour is a great way to expand your reach and make sure that you're casting a very wide net so that you have a higher likelihood of bringing in more people and winning that prize. Most dollars raised power hours are all about strategy as well. And this type of 
Power Hour is usually won by smart outreach and coordinating gifts from big donors. Um, it doesn't matter if you have just one loan donation during this hour, if the only person who gives to you um, is is a big donor if they give you a lot. Um, so you'll wanna pull your donation report from last year and identify the people who tend to give in bigger amounts, say $100 or more, and focus on those do do donors for this power hour. Um, though you can use a different strategy and just try to bring in as many small donations as possible. It's whatever makes sense for your donor base, but most of these power hours are won by working with those donors who give in larger amounts. Um, if you have a donor who is planning on giving a gift, on giving day you can coordinate with them ahead of time so that they give during the power hour so if every year somebody gives you $250 or $500 for giving day for apes you can reach out to them and say hey can you give during this hour because it'll help us win a prize um, and this is also a great time to pull your retention report and reach out to donors from 2019 who haven't given again, again this year. Um, get an email ready before the event, you know, make it up in your email marketing program, design it, make sure it's working. Um, and then when you're getting ready for this power hour, just pull the list um, from your dashboard. You can get that under reports and plug that list of donors into your email marketing software. Um, the thing is these donors are low hanging fruit. They are, have supported you in the past and they are likely to support you again. And it's really worthwhile to make an appeal to these people during your the most dollars raised power hour since you know that they're more or less a sure thing. They're probably gonna come back and give to you. Um, so the last type of prize we're going to talk about is golden tickets. Um, this is a randomly chosen donation that wins you some extra cash. Um, since it's random, there's really not that much strategy involved, um, but to be in the prize pool for a golden ticket, you need to have a donation within that hour. So if your donors go radio silent during that time, uh, you're not going to be eligible for that golden ticket hour. Um, so the strategy here is really just keeping your traffic and volume up and getting donations consistently every hour, especially during the golden ticket hours. Um, and these can be a really great opportunity to talk to your smaller donors um, because even a small donation can help you win a golden ticket. It doesn't matter if the donation is $5 or $500. Um, and messaging that every donation made during a golden ticket hour, no matter the size, could help you win a prize can be a really good way to uh, push people to give, especially people who maybe don't have as much to give. So for golden tickets, again, they really and truly are random. We don't pick them. Our system picks a random donation and pulls that. So there's really no way to game the system here or methodically compete for a golden ticket because they are truly luck of the draw. Um, but as I mentioned, you can increase your luck just a little bit by keeping donation volume up and keeping people going to your uh, profile to donate and having a comprehensive plan to talk to your donors all day long through email and social media. Um, and golden tickets are fun donor engagement activities. You'll be able to see the name of the donor that wins a golden ticket for you. So you can use that as an opportunity to say thanks and reach out to that donor um, and thank them for helping you win a prize, which is a really nice experience for the donor. And it's a really great way to start cultivating a relationship with that donor. So that's a it, golden tickets are fun and random, and they're also a really great opportunity for you to talk to your donors and get to know them and thank them for their help. All right, so I'm going to pass it back to Jackie. Thank you, Linda. Right, uh, let's go back. Okay. Uh, so last year we saw a big increase in the amount of donations that came in through the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. It was around $84,000, which was double the amount of the previous year. And so this was through 31 individual fundraisers competing on that leaderboard, and we had 33 organizations total in the event last year. So we want to encourage all of our participants this year to try to engage supporters as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers and increase that number. Next, let's start by talking about what peer-to-peer -peer fundraising really is. The key ideas here are participation and motivation. You have supporters who care about your work and they want to know about ways they can help. Making a donation is one way, but they might want more options. And there are lots of surveys and studies out there about how particularly the younger generation, the so-called Generation Z, they really crave 
connection, connection to a community with shared values, shared interests. They don't just want to make a donation and they might not even have the funds to do so, but they want a way to be involved. And one way to do this is through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Your supporters are going to be inspired by your work and so they can share their story about what your story means to them. They can set up a fundraiser and share it through social media and emails with their contacts. And then their contacts are motivated to support them. And this is sometimes called a champion effect. Their friends, their families, wants them to be successful as a fundraiser to be seen as a champion for your organization. Next. And so sometimes the first reaction might be, I don't know anyone who can do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, but if you think about it as, well, who can be our storytellers, you all have them. And here are some examples. You can think about your staff members. They all know your story. And your caregivers who work with the apes every day probably have some great stories. They can talk about an animal who is special to them, what they've learned working with the apes, what their own biggest achievement has been. And we've seen groups or teams of caregivers get together and create a fundraising page together, which is a great way to pool resources, pool networks, and reach a lot of personal contacts to help raise money for your organization. Also, every organization is going to have a board of directors or trustees, and they often or should often have an obligation to fundraise to give or get a certain amount each year. A peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is a way to get. It gives your board members a chance to tell their story about why your organization is so meaningful to them and reach out to their personal network of friends, families, and colleagues. Also think about your volunteers. And some of you have had volunteers travel internationally to spend weeks or even months at your center. They've had really special experiences and probably have some great stories that they love to tell people. You may have people who volunteered and have wanted to come back this year, but they can't because of the travel restrictions and COVID. And that's really frustrating and they want to be able to do something to help. So this could be a way for them to do that. And then there's your donors. They are already your supporters and we know they already connect to your mission. These are tough times and I know organizations sometimes feel bad about going back to donors again and asking for more money again, but this is a different kind of ask. It's a way of asking your supporters to help in a different way in which they don't have to make a donation because you don't have to donate to become a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. So this is a way to cultivate relationships with your donors and give them some recognition that they are special and they have a special role that they can play in your organization. Then finally, you have your social media followers, and these may be people you don't know at all, but they have some reason for following your story. It may have been an emotional rescue story that they read about that drew them to your page, or maybe they heard about your work from some other source. So letting them know about this way to help could inspire some of them to become fundraisers for you for Giving Day. Next. Um, Peer-to-peer fundraisers can help you on Giving Day in a lot of ways, and we've talked about this a bit. We talked about that peer-to-peer -peer le uh, fundraiser leaderboard, which has four spots waiting for winners to get prize funds, but also the funds raised by your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers are calculated in your total dollars raised, which helps on that, that leaderboard. And the donations that come in through those fundraisers could help you win the power hours and golden tickets. And beyond the prizes, the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers can help to tell your story so they're raising awareness of your work and can possibly bring some new donors to your organization. All right. Now, I can't guarantee that you're going to get a lot of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers if you send this information out in your emails and social media, but I can say it's very likely you won't get them if you don't ask. People who want to support your organization need to be told specifically how they can help. So give them a clear call to action. We're going to be adding some more resources to the nonprofit toolkit section of the Giving Day website. So here's a list of some of the things that you can send to your supporters and let them know about to help them to become peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. The first is a link to the nonprofit toolkit on the Giving Day website. And this is information that takes people step by step through how they set up a fundraising page. 
The second is a link to your organization's Mighty Cause page because this is going to be the starting point for them to set up their page when they click on the fundraise link on your page. You can also send them the information on rules and prizes that we've just talked about so that they're going to know the times of the power hours and golden tickets that you're able to compete on and they can encourage their contacts to donate during those times. And finally, you can share the link to this webinar, which is being recorded, and it's going to be available probably tomorrow. Um, and I'll send that link out to the webinar and also to the, um, the prize rules page to everyone. So I'm going to turn this over to Linda now to talk more about how you can make things easier for your fundraisers and some best practices for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. All right, thank you, Jackie. Um, so I'm gonna go through some technical stuff mostly related to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising now, as well as some best practices. Um, so the first thing you need to know is that setting up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is super easy on Mighty Cause. This is what we were designed to do, and it's designed so that anybody with any amount of technical savvy can do it. Um, you have a big button on your organization profile that says fundraise, and it lives right next to your donate button. As you can see on the Center for Great Apes page there, it's right next to the donate button, so it's very easy to find. Uh, when somebody clicks fundraise from that button, it's automatically connected to your organization, so there's no need to worry about their page being linked to the correct place. They don't have to choose anything. They just have to confirm that, yes, they want to fundraise for Center for Great Apes or whatever, or organization they're fundraising for, um, and it's automatically linked to your page. So all of the donor information, um, all of the donations that come in through that page, you'll also see that populate in your donation report because it's linked to your organization on Mighty Cause. Um, we have a fundraiser wizard that walks uh, people through the process of creating the fundraiser, and it's designed to be very easy and intuitive. If somebody can set up a, a Facebook or an Instagram account, they can also create a fundraiser. It's very simple. And we do have a new feature that can help them get set up even more easily, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide. On their page, they can add photos, they can have, add their story that talks about their relationship with your organization, how they came to find out about your work, uh, what they love so much about your work and why they care about your organization. Um, they can add videos. They can do really a lot with their story. This is their spot to get creative and really tell their story about how they came to learn about your organization, how they came to care about this particular cause, um, and really just make this page their own. Um, and once it's published, they can just share the URL to their page with their friends and social network to get donations. They can also set their own goal and they can start accepting donations as early as the 14th of September when early donations open. Um, now, just to clarify a few things about peer-to-peer -peer pages, um, if your organization is fiscally sponsored by a Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries or another organization, if you don't have 501c3 status, in the United States, we will be opting in all of your pages on September 11th. Um, before the event really begins and kicks off, you're not able to accept donations on Mighty Cause um, because your fiscal sponsorship has not gone into effect. Um, so we will be lifting that on September 11th um, so that people can start creating fundraisers for you. That is a Friday, I believe. So they have the whole weekend to get their page up and running so that they can start fundraising on the 14th. Um, there's no cost to setting up a fundraiser. They are not required to donate to their page. Um, but just as a, a fun fact, most people do end up making a donation to their page. Sometimes it's just a couple small ones. Uh, sometimes it's a big one. So this is also an avenue through which people donate to your cause. Um, so that's important to keep in mind as well. They don't have to. They're not required to. Um, and it can certainly be a way for people who um, don't have as much to give this year, especially a lot of people are struggling uh, with coronavirus. Um, and the recession in the United States, but uh, they, they don't have to give, but a lot of people certainly do give through their own peer-to-peer -peer pages. Um, and all of the money that's raised through peer-to-peer -peer pages is bundled into your fundraising totals for Giving Day. Um, it will show up on the leaderboard as part of your total, and it's also bundled into your disbursements. Um, really, the only thing that's different about these donations made through peer-to-peer -peer, um, is that you'll be able to see the source on your donation report. So when you pull that report and even on the, the just the quick view 
of your donation report, you'll be able to see what page the donation came through. But other than that, they are treated just like any other donation that's made to your organization through the Giving Day site. Um, so that's it. Otherwise, they're treated the same as any donation. They're rolled into your disbursement. Uh, the person who creates the fundraiser, um, sometimes this is a concern, so I just want to make this perfectly clear, um, that the person who creates the fundraiser page has no access to your funding information, and they will never, ever have any access to your funds because it's just rolled into the amount that is dispersed to your organization for the event. All right, so we do have a new feature this year. We came out with this last December, I believe, um, and that is fundraiser templates. Um, these are accessible from your campaigns tool on your dashboard, which I'm also going to talk about in just a second. Um, what a template template allows you to do is pre-fill parts of your fundraisers page to help them get up and running even easier than just creating their fundraiser from scratch, um, which is really perfect for busy board members and trustees who may not have the time or the desire to create a new page from scratch. Um, you, will, you all have one fundraiser template available, um, so you can go ahead and set that up to be specific for giving day for apes um, just so that you know all of the information on the page is specific to giving day um, and you can use your one fundraiser template for that purpose since you'll most likely be recruiting people to fundraise on your behalf um, when we're going through the process or they're going through the process of creating the fundraiser they'll have the option of using the template they can turn it down so they are not required to use the template if they would like to fill in everything by themselves um, but they will have the option it'll ask them do you want to use this template and and they would say yes or no. Um, and if they do choose the template, they can still customize their page. They can change anything on their page. It just gives them a running start. So they're not locked into using any of the content you provided, and they can just use it for inspiration as they build their page and are thinking about how to tell their story. And they can also leave it just as it is with the information you've pre-filled for them. Um, so it makes it really easy for people who want a minimal amount of effort um, and also can help people who are like, I don't really know what to say. Um, this gives them a, a place to start and can inspire their story. And speaking of the campaigns tool, I wanted to take a moment to talk about this tool because it's very important to managing peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, it's under fundraising on your dashboard. And from this tool, you can keep track of your own fundraiser pages, so pages that were created by your organization for your organization. Um, and you can also see pages that people have created on your behalf. So that means if you're saying, oh, well, who create? we just sent out an email asking people to create peer-to-peer uh, -peer pages for us, how many people are doing it? You can easily view that information under the campaigns tool. Um, and you can also see when it was created, whether it's ended and how much they've raised. Um, one thing that you'll probably want to do as you think about peer-to-peer -peer for this year is use this tool to see who has done a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for you in the past so that you can target them for outreach and recruit them again this year. They've already done it. Um, they've already know, they already know what it's all about, so uh, they're most likely going to be able and willing to come back and do it again for you. Um, and you'll maybe want to go a little bit harder on the people who've raised a good amount for you in the past. So if they've been good to you, um, make a little bit of extra effort to reach out to them. Um, you can also hide or delete old fundraisers from this screen. So if you wanted to remove a page that was set up in 2015 and not have that appear in any searches or be accessible to anyone, um, there's just a little eyeball icon that you can click to hide that in your campaign screen. Um, you can also fully delete pages if you want to. So this is a great way that you can easily manage uh, campaigns so that you're making sure that only current campaigns are going to appear in the Giving Day for Apes search. All right, so I wanted to go over some best practices regarding peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, first, please signal that the page is for this year's event by putting Giving Day for Apes 2020 or at least 2020 in the title of the page and make sure that your fundraisers all follow suit. Um, and the reason for this is because there's not some computer program telling us at Mighty Cause which pages we need to include in the peer-to-peer -peer leaderboard. It's a human being specifically me, um, that's looking at a list of 
every peer-to-peer -peer page that's connected to the nonprofits that are participating on a spreadsheet and sorting through that list and that data and deciding what to include. Um, so because I'm a human being and I'm not perfect, I'm not a computer, I have no earthly way of knowing that you intended to use a page from 2016 that has not been updated from 2016 for your 2020 campaign. Um, I can't know your intentions. Unfortunately, I'm not psychic, so I need help from all of the participants uh, just using the title to signal to me that this is a page that you would like included on the peer-to-peer -peer leaderboard. Um, and for that reason, it's helpful to us at um, Giving Day for Apes to not reuse pages from year to year, but to create new ones, because I can be pretty certain that a peer-to-peer -peer page that was created in 2020 is intended for the 2020 event. But with an old page, I, I have literally no idea. I don't know what your intentions are. So um, I do understand that some of you have people fundraising for you um, who really just don't want to create a new page every year and would prefer to use an old one. So if you have a situation like that, please reach out to me. Um, I'm the one who's manually building the peer-to-peer -peer leaderboard. Um, so I want to know what's happening. If you're using an old page, I would prefer that you not. Um, so to that end, I can see if I can find you a solution like creating a new page for them with the same old content and then just handing it off to either you or the donor since on my end as a super admin on Mighty Cause um, I can actually change the owner of a peer-to-peer -peer page um, so that's important to know if you have any questions or you're like ah well my trustee wants to use this old page that they've been using for several years please email me and let me know and I'll try to find a solution for you or just earmark it and say okay this old page is going to be included on the peer-to-peer -peer board um, but again that's not perfect because I'm human. So if you can create a new page, I would greatly prefer it. And I thank you in advance for the effort that that takes. Um, so as I mentioned, the campaigns tool is really helpful um, in managing all of these old pages because a lot of the organizations who are participating have been participating for many years. So you might have a, a lot of pages out there. Um, so I usually do a quick audit before the event, um, you know, just to make sure that there are no old pages that are still appearing in searches. But I just wanna, just human to human, it is literally hundreds of pages for me to go through. Um, so it's much quicker if you can just take a few minutes um, and just ensure that all of your old peer-to-peer -peer pages are hidden and that only current peer-to-peer -peer pages are live so that they show in the search for giving day. Um, so yeah, I'm just asking for your help if you can use the campaign screen to hide any old fundraisers that you don't want to use and are not applicable for this year. That would be a huge help in making sure that your uh, current fundraisers are the ones that are showing in the Giving Day for Apes search. I also wanted to take some time to get into the rules for peer-to-peer -peer as it relates to Giving Day for Apes, um, as well as some additional best practices. Um, so it's really important that you stay true to the spirit of peer-to-peer, -peer, which is an individual supporter raising money for an organization and a cause that they care about and bringing new people into your cause and supporter base. So ideally, the peer-to-peer -peer competition should be between individuals. And it is a game, but we do want to ensure that there is fair play. Um, so that means that a fundraiser started by your organization for Giving Day is not eligible for the peer-to-peer -peer leaderboard first and foremost. So if you as an organization start a fundraising page that you want to use for this year, that's absolutely fine. But because it's your organization's page and not an individual's page, it is not eligible for that peer-to-peer -peer leaderboard. Um, and staff and other people who are closely involved with your organization, like your executive director, your trustees, they're absolutely welcome to participate. It's great to get them involved in this. But the caveat here is that they should not be using any organizational resources for their fundraisers. Um, that means that they should be promoting their fundraiser to their personal network only. Um, your organization should not be sending blast emails to your whole donor list to get them to donate to your executive director's peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Um, your executive director can certainly reach out to their professional network on LinkedIn, use their personal social media accounts, use their personal email. Um, what's not allowed is using your organization's marketing budget and heft to further their own fundraiser. Um, using their work email address, um, using your org's social media accounts, or anything that is supported and paid for by your organization. Uh, we just want to keep it fair. Um, obviously, we can't 
police this very closely. So it's really an honor system um, that we hope everybody will play by the rules. Um, but this is a small group of organizations and people do tend to tattle on others that they see bending or breaking the rules. So just be aware of that um, if you're skating the edges of a, a rule and what's allowed. Um, we really do wanna have a competition where really uh, just a motivated and enthusiastic supporter of your organization has just as much of a chance as topping that peer-to-peer -peer leaderboard as your organization's leadership. That's the spirit of peer-to-peer -peer, and we wanna try to stay true to that. We're not gonna you know, crack the whip or police that too closely, but we do ask that you follow these rules and best practices when you're considering peer-to-peer -peer for your Giving Day campaign. All right, so we are in the home stretch, but I just wanted to let you know about the new ambassadors tool. We talked about this a bit on our last webinar. Um, this, doesn't, this doesn't count as peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. I just wanna make that 100% clear. Um, but what this does is it gives supporters who don't want to run a full fundraising campaign a way to help out on Giving Day. Um, We'll be in touch with more specific instructions about how to utilize this tool um, because it is totally new and we just need to get some step-by-step -step instructions available for you. But supporters who want to help you fundraise but don't want to run a peer-to-peer -peer campaign can sign up to become an ambassador on the Giving Day for Apes site. Um, and that will give them a link that's personalized. It's their own link um, that they can send out to their friends and family members and their professional network to uh, support your cause. Um, and we can see how many people and donations they've brought in through that personalized link. So we'll be able to see they brought 50 people in through Facebook, they brought two people in through LinkedIn, they brought 233 people in from Twitter, et cetera. And we can actually see the total of donations that they have provided for through that personalized link. So this is a really easy thing to pitch to people who want to help, but perhaps do not have the capacity to run a full peer-to-peer -peer campaign right now. Um, so again, we're going to follow up with some more specific instructions, but this is a really low bar ask, and it can get more people sharing a link to your page. So just stay tuned for some more information and, can, and know that this is an option if you have maybe somebody who's close to your organization who doesn't want to run their own campaign, but would like to get involved, they can sign up to become an ambassador. As always, Mighty Cause is here to support you for Giving Day for Apes, so if you have any questions about a peer-to-peer -peer page or how they work, or if you need any, any help with anything on Mighty Cause, please do not hesitate to reach out to, to our support team. Um, you can, of course, always come to me, uh, Linda at MightyCause.com, um, but I will just say I'm not often as quick as, quick as they are to uh, respond um, because it comes into my personal inbox, which, you know, is, is not as neat as it should be and I don't spend a lot of time in customer support anymore so sometimes I don't know the answer to some technical questions and I have to pass it off to our support team anyway um, so if I'm slow to respond or if it's more of a technical question how do I use this particular thing or how can I find this our support team is here to help you we're also online for the entire 24 hours of the giving event. Um, so if you need emergency help, if you're like, ah, I don't know what to do, this person accidentally, accidentally donated three times, because that sometimes happens, our support team is the, the first responder for that. So just uh, make sure that you familiarize yourself with uh, support at mightycause.com and please do not be shy about reaching out if you need anything from them. Our next and final Giving Day for Apes webinar uh, is on communications planning and strategy, which is uh, one of my favorite topics. Um, so be sure to try and sign up for that one on the Giving Day site, since I'm sure it'll be a good one. Um, Jackie and I will be sharing some information and tips that could really help your campaign resonate. Um, and since now is a very tricky time because of COVID-19, um, it's extra important to be smart and strategic about communications in 2020. So make sure that you register for that one as well. Um, because that should be a good one and that's our last one for the event this year. So be sure to check that one out. And that is it for today. Um, in terms of the presentation, I did wanna make some time for some questions. So if there's anything you'd like to ask either me or Jackie, um, just go ahead and stick that into the questions box of the GoToWebinar panel. Um, let's see, we've got a couple of questions. 
Okay, um, I am happy to take this one. Um, Jackie, this one's about unique donors. Um, can you explain more about unique donors? What does it mean to be a unique donor? So basically, that can mean a couple of different things. We look at a couple of different factors. Um, so that you have certain things that identify you as an individual when you make a transaction online. Um, one can be your IP address. Um, one can be your credit card, the credit card that you're using. It can be your email address. Um, so there's a lot of different things that can identify you as an individual. Um, we do have some systems in place that will tell us, for instance, if there's a lot of donations coming from one credit card or if there's a lot of donations coming from one particular IP address, which is where uh, basically it tells us where you're located in the world. You can use a VPN, which is a virtual private network, um, but we can see all of these different factors. So basically, a unique donor is one individual. Um, usually, if if there's an organization that kind of tries to get around that, um, we can see that on the back end because we do, as a platform, have some security measures in place that will say, oh, hey, there might be some potential fraud going on. There's a whole lot of transactions coming from this one credit card or this one location or this one email address. Um, you guys won't necessarily see those, but we, we tend to see them. So it's easiest just to think about a unique donor as one individual. So you as a, an individual human being making a donation through your phone, you are one person um, because we can definitely see on the back end and have some, some systems in place that we can see when one person is trying to be six unique donors. Um, and just for the purposes of uh, like the most unique donors, um, Power Hour, <clears throat> if you as a person, as an individual from your one device and your one IP address and your one credit card make six donations during the space of that hour, you are still just one donor. Um, so that's important to remember as well. During a Power Hour uh, for most dollars raised, so you get credit for all six of those donations, but if you make six donations from one as one individual during a most unique donors power hour, you are just you're given one credit, um, so you're counted as one. So I hope that makes sense and helps explain that. Um, Jackie, if you have anything you wanted to add to that, please let me know. Yeah, just one thing to add because I've been thinking about what some organizations have done in previous years. If you have some kind of event where you're going to be inviting people to make donations online and they're all doing it through like one laptop or one iPad, let us know so that um, we know multiple donations are going to be coming in from one IP address. Yeah, absolutely. Um, give us a heads up. You can either contact me or contact support. Um, like I think in years past, um, they were, I mean, this year it's a little different because not many people can travel and go places uh, because of COVID-19, but there were a lot of donations coming from a specific tablet that was actually at the the sanctuary. Um, so that's the kind of thing that we can, on our end, disable um, you know, the security measures that are in place that flag that and say, oh, there's a lot of donations from different credit cards coming from this one device because that can look fraudulent to our system. It doesn't know what you're doing. So just let us know if you have a situation like that and we can take measures to ensure that your donations don't get stopped, that you don't miss those donations if you have like one device that, you know, you want to have multiple people make donations through. Um, so yeah, that's a really great point. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, okay. so. Here's a question. Is there a limit on the number of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers an organization can have? Um, well, I am happy to take that one as well. The answer is no, there's absolutely no limit. Like the sky's the limit if you find 5,000 people who want to do a peer-to-peer -peer page for you you can have 5,000 people. Um, there's no upper limit whatsoever. Um, so you can absolutely go nuts getting peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. There's no limit to it. All right, and then the last question I'm seeing, and be sure if you have any questions, well, you've got me and Jackie live. If you have any questions, please type it into that questions box. Um, the last question I'm seeing for now is how will we know who the winners of are of the milestone prizes and the end of night prize? So as Jackie mentioned, um, the end of night prize will be announced after the event is over because obviously the the event automatically switches to the post event site um, and it'll be on the results page most likely or we may have a separate page set up but there will be a page where you can find out who the winner 
of that prize is. Um, and that is going to be the same for the milestone prizes. We'll likely have a page set up um, that you that branches off from the main Giving Day site where you can see who those prize winners are or we may incorporate it. We're not entirely sure yet, but you will be able to see who those winners are on the Giving Day site. Um, depending on like the milestone prizes, it depends on when those donations come in. So if they come in before the event, like the 2000th donation that may be on the live site as soon as it switches over. Um, but there's always a post event site that, or the post event site always has a results page and the, it has information about the prize winners there. That's kind of sort of keeping them preserved in perpetuity. So you can find that information there. Um, and Jackie, did you have anything to add? Nope, I think that covers it. All right. Well, that looks like it's it for um, questions. Um, obviously, you guys probably all have our email addresses. If you have anything that you wanted to talk about after the webinar is over, that's more specific to your organization. Um, thank you guys all for coming and, and sharing this time with us and learning from us. Um, we're really excited to see what you're able to accomplish this year. It should be a really, really exciting giving day. Thank you, Linda. Absolutely. Thank you too, Jackie. Um, happy fundraising, everybody.